Uh, welcome everyone to an uh, interview with the Masters. Today we have the great Jeremy uh, Fence. Fence? How do I pronounce that? <laughs> yeah, Fenske. Fenske. Jeremy Fenske. Sorry yeah. about that. <laughs> it's all right. But um, yeah, Jeremy teaches at CGMA. He teaches digital painting. Sadly, that class is full now. But mm, too late. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, thank you so much, everyone, for joining us and. Um, I'll be handing it off to Jeremy now. Hey, everybody. All right, I will share my screen. <laughs> All right. And, uh, oh, real quick, uh, if any, uh, this is open uh, session, so anybody can ask questions at any time in the questions uh, window, and I will be relaying it to Jeremy as, as it flows. OK. So, should I just show some images and talk? Or? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we could we could get started that way. Okay. Well, hello everybody. Um, my name is Jeremy Fenske. Um, I've been a concept artist at Zenimax Online Studios for six years. I'm just at six years now. Um, I've been working on the Elder Scrolls Online for all that time, pretty much, and. Lately, been working on a lot of the expansion content, the DLC, and stuff like that. Um, I'm just going to run through some of these images. This is the images I'm going to show are just a huge mix of different things, anywhere from like work that I've done at Zenimax uh, to personal work um, and stuff like that. So uh, it was a huge mix. I didn't really get a chance to to put the uh, uh, a good collection together, so there might be some actual um, some duplicates as I'm scrolling through here. So excuse that. Um, but originally, I'm from Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, I grew up in Cleveland and studied art at uh, Columbus College of Art and Design, um, and graduated in 2009, and and really just got a job right out of school and just came here. Um, came to uh, Maryland, where I'm at right now, in Baltimore. So, cool, cool. Nice. Yeah. So some of this stuff's just like a, a lot of mix. Uh, there's some traditional stuff in here, like this image I showed was uh, just some brush pen. Um, it's this cafe around the corner that I really like going to. We just get coffee and just draw people. Mm -hmm. um, some personal work. I do a lot of sketches like this. I did this one um, on my tablet. I have a little Samsung tablet that I do paintings oh. in Sketch Sketchbook Pro. It's nice. a really great app. It's a four dollar app, and it's got really great tools. Like you know, Photoshop's so expensive, but um, you get that on your phone or tablet. It's actually really good. Um, some dry brush. Uh, cool. I actually really like it when my brush pens are drying out because you get this really nice dry brush look. So some stuff at the beach. Nice. A lot of palm trees. Do a lot of little thumbnail sketches in my sketchbook. Um, oh, those are while cool. Drinking a beer. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. <great. laughs> um, some more personal work here. Just doing some, practicing some photo methods and and doing some post-apocalyptic kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Just little sketches. I do a lot of sketches. Uh, usually in the morning to warm up or at lunch. Um, you know, take usually about an hour to, to do a sketch. Um, it just keeps me fresh, keeps me kind of loose. It, mm -hmm. It's a it's a good thing. It's a good habit to have. Just to uh, just open up a new document and and start sketching and and fail probably. <laughs> um, but 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 sometimes not. Sometimes you come up with an interesting composition that turns into something later, or you learn something new. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's what a lot of these are. There's just a lot of black and white, just quick sketches. 
composition studies and mm -hmm. do you do these when you work uh, traditionally at all too like thumbnails and stuff or yeah yeah um, we saw that image a little earlier that was just doing some uh, using a felt pen just doing some quick thumbnails I I like working in grayscale markers and brush pens I like doing a lot of ink stuff um, I don't really use pencils a whole lot uh, I like just putting down the idea fast and and uh, and quick and dirty um, mm -hmm. yeah it's, it's kind of uh, you know if I fail it's fine I, I don't really like my sketchbooks are, are kind of a mess because I don't really I'm not precious about them at all I, I actually get my sketchbooks from Office Depot. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> I use I use cheap uh, pens and cheap materials because uh, yeah. I don't want to I don't want to fall in love with anything. I used to get moleskin, like really fancy moleskin, and I would never draw in it because I'd be like too precious <laughs> about it. <laughs> yeah, I can I can totally relate. Do you work? Uh, you work? Do you work pretty small? Uh, what size you usually work on for the thumbnails? Uh, well, as I was painting here a little bit, like I don't know if you can kind of see roughly that size. It's pretty small. Like, mm -hmm. uh, if, what if at home here I, I have a tablet, um, so I work slightly bigger. But when I'm on the Cintiq, it's usually a little smaller than that, even. Um, I keep my thumbnails very small so I can get a good read of the whole thing uh, and don't really zoom in until I'm happy with the, the values and the composition. Got you. There's some production work, some stuff that uh, you probably, you know, won't really see on the website or online anytime soon, but it's, it's important work because this is a lot of the work that I do at Zenimax. There's a, a lot of inspirational painting that I do and then there's a lot of this more informative stuff, right? Mm -hmm. That's um, helping out the modelers and the asset creators. Yeah. At Dynamax, so. Yeah, these are awesome, man. So cool. Thanks. Uh, do you advise to master 2D uh, before you move to 3D, or learn both simultaneously? Oh, like uh, doing 3D art. Yeah. <clears throat> well, you know, it, I'm not a I'm not a very good 3D artist, honestly. I, I use 3D sparingly, and I use it really just for block out for bigger paintings where I don't want to think about scale and perspective. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> I, I think it's incredibly healthy as a 2D artist to learn 3D. Uh, here's a watercolor. Oh, nice. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, nice. I think it's very healthy to do, that, especially if you, if you're a character kind of person, you like to draw characters and paint figures. Uh, I highly recommend like sculpting either traditionally with Sculpey or sculpting with um, um, ZBrush or Mudbox. Uh, mm -hmm. There's something really valuable about like learning how to draw like a sculptor. Uh, mm. And the same would go for environment artists doing low poly stuff like using Max or, or SketchUp or Moto. You know, there's uh, there's a lot to be learned from mm -hmm. working in both. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I think there's a lot of value in, in learning both. Um, but I'm I don't want to learn too much 3D because I'm afraid then they'll just turn me into a 3D artist. <laughs> and I like drawing and painting and designing, so yeah. <laughs> I try to I try to play a little dumb with that stuff. So gotcha. Just some character thumbnails. Cool. Nice. Well, that's really awesome. <laughs> it's like some demon queen or yeah I think well originally we had the idea that the the head would turn in different phases like it would get it would go from like neutral to like intense and angry uh, uh, I don't think we ended up doing that <laughs> <laughs> I see I see some personal work. I, I a lot of this character stuff, like like these guys uh, or ladies, uh, there were demos for my class or um, 
because before I taught at CGMA, I taught at art school here in Baltimore, uh, MICA, mm -hmm. and um, I just taught concept art, and I did that for three years, so, uh, but I stopped teaching there, and now I'm just with CGMA, so. Cool, cool. Um, is there a particular culture or mythology that inspired the, your drawings for those? Uh, for which? Um, I'm assuming the ones that you just showed earlier for with these the, characters. Yeah, for the Elder Scrolls. Um, a lot of stuff actually. Uh, you know, the, these are three different characters that I was developing, and I was looking at a lot of different stuff. Uh, when I get a task that is pretty wide open, um, I tend to thumbnail a lot more. Like this is a lot of thumbnails more than I would normally do mm -hmm. uh, but just because it's so wide open so for these for this character especially like these guys down here um, I was looking at a lot of Hindu stuff a lot of Thai stuff Southeast Asia um, a lot of intricate patterns um, a lot of a lot of the geometric shapes uh, are taken from that um, just giving that feeling of, of uh, I don't know almost like Eastern feel to it yeah I'm always digging at Pinterest or Google Images to, to come up with, uh, you know, to get inspiration and just get ideas. Mm -hmm. I'm never, I'm never really working on this stuff just straight from my head, and a lot of that is. But I'm always looking and researching and learning about other cultures. For a game like Elder Scrolls, it's very important because you have, you know, nine distinct races. You have so many distinct uh, worlds. Mm -hmm. within Tamriel that you have to kind of like, <clears throat> you have to pull your inspiration from several different places, you know, and we need to be able to, re as an audience, you need to relate to it, so you pull from uh, the real world as much as possible. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. <laughs> gotcha. That's cool. Nice. And also, I'd, some of those were just, I'm a huge fan of the Souls games, so yeah. <laughs> I just, whenever it's like a dark or evil character, I just pretend I'm working on Dark Souls <laughs> and make a Dark Souls boss <laughs> or something. Nice. Uh, and this is another just like quick study. Um, oh, that's cool. The colors are so nice. Yeah, thank you. Do you uh, do you believe in artistic block? And if you do, how do you deal with it? Um, well, block happens. You know, I I I believe it can happen if you're stretching yourself a lot. Um, at work, you kind of have to ignore it because you're getting paid to do an assignment. You know, if you're if you're paid to do a, an image for a client. You can't tell them I have creative block, or yeah, I have a I have a mental block, or I'm exhausted, because uh, you know you'll probably get fired from that job. Mm -hmm. But uh, so in a professional sense, no, you just have to really work through it. Um, there are certainly some triggers that you can learn over time about what gets you motivated and what gets you going. For me, it's it's like loud music and coffee. <laughs> you know? yeah. um, so just drink some coffee, listen to really loud epic soundtracks or something, whatever I have to do to get myself motivated mm -hmm. um, and just work through it. Uh, on, on a personal level, like when that happens to me uh, and I don't have deadlines, uh, what I'll do is uh, actually just go outside and paint traditionally or draw in my sketchbook. Um, I think that's uh, super important, and it's it's a good way to just kind of move away from the computer, move move away from work in a professional sense, and just have fun with art because you know that's why we did it originally. That's why all artists work originally because we love doing it, mm -hmm. and sometimes you need to bring that love back in a way. Yeah, uh, and that's yeah, that's kind of how I do it. Very cool. But I would never use block as an excuse, you know. That's mm -hmm. 
if you're finding yourself using it as an excuse, then, you know, <laughs> that's not good. Yeah, yeah. Do you have any practice routines that you stick to? Uh, master studies, for example, or plain, uh, plain air painting? Absolutely, yeah. Um, wow. All of the above, <laughs> kind <laughs> of. Uh, and I'll run through a lot of images that uh, that show that. Um, I was showing some black and white thumbnails and stuff that I, that I do. I do that quite often. Um, a lot of them aren't great, and that's fine, you know. Um, it's just kind of running through ideas and running through different designs. Um, I go outside and I paint in oil, uh, plain air, and, and watercolor. And, uh, you know, that I tend to learn a lot. I probably learn the most about painting environments by painting in oil outside or watercolor even, uh, and just painting from life in general. Um, I think that's a, a super important uh, um, just a really important study, a really important practice. Yeah. Um, I also do a lot of film studies, and I do a lot of, I do some master study. Um, most of my master studies are just me looking at a lot of older mas old master work. And, you know, one of my favorites, for example, is Isaac Levitin. Uh, he's one of my favorite landscape painters. Uh, probably one of the best, in my opinion, and, and just looking at some of his paintings, looking at his color choices, and really trying to dive in and understand what he was thinking, you know, what the time of day is, like what kinds of colors he's using. Um, so, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I mean, all those things are really great. Uh, you were talking. You were talking about Isaac Levitin, right? The Russian painter. Yeah. Okay, got it. Yeah, he's a Russian painter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's great. You know, I, I love Shishkin, Peter Monstad. Um, oh, yeah. You know, if you take, if you're in my class, uh, <laughs> I'll be talking a lot about those guys. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what was the third guy that you mentioned? Peter Monstad? Uh, Monstad. 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 Um, here, I'll, I even, I have a whole lecture on one painting of his, um, Monstead. He does really great um, winter scapes. Those are my favorite ones, actually. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, it's a really great, there are a lot of really great paintings just to talk about lighting and color. Uh, let me just pull this up. Um, just talking about reflective light, you know, atmospheric light. Because, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the snow is white, so it's highly reflective. Um, yeah, his studies, winterscapes are, are so, so just phenomenal. Um, yeah, that's awesome. But, yeah. Do you have any opinion on uh, personal style or how you should develop it? Hmm. Yeah, that. Hmm. <laughs> That's something I, I, I guess, I kind of struggle with in a way. Like I, um, I tend not to think about it, and when I think about it, I get a little frustrated. <laughs> so, in other words, like I look at other artists, art, artists that have like really great personal style, and I think, oh, wouldn't that be great if I had a style that was really distinguishable, and and I feel like if I try too hard to push that, it comes off as awkward. Or it doesn't come off as genuine. Mm. You know. So mm. I sometimes wonder if I'm making if I'm making work that people expect from me, or is it work that is really truly from me? You know, like what what is it that makes me individual as an artist? And that's that's something I don't have an answer for because I you know I, I constantly struggle with that myself. Mm -hmm. um, I, I I'm somewhat jealous of artists that have such a strong personal style and are great from the start and just kind of stick with it because you kind of know what to expect. Mm -hmm. But I think me personally, though, I, I'm so interested in so many different things that I I don't know I I I like I kind of likened it to like 
being an actor. You know, you have your leading man actors, your Bruce Willis and, and stuff like that. Like, those are the people with strong personal style. And I, I would be more like a, a character actor, someone that's like could disappear and do something really yeah. different. Um, and I, and I try to explore like many different things on my, you know, my personal work. But most of the work that people see from me are, are this kind of stuff, right? Like from Elder Scrolls. Um, so I, I don't, man, I, I don't know. I, I guess my best advice is just, you know, don't think of it because if you think about it too much, then it doesn't feel genuine. Mm -hmm. Right, it has to come from you. Um, it can't come from other in influences. Like I yeah. look at like uh, the Kim Jong Gi, you know, I look at oh, his work, yeah. <laughs> and I love his stuff. And I mean, like I I see him do a demo, and it's really amazing. And then I just want to go home and do that, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and then I realize quickly that I can't do that. Like that's just not me, you know. Um, right. I can learn from it, and I can try, but you know. I, Another thing I, t I tell students is like when you're really trying to discover that is maybe just like find the art that you are personally really interested in, the art that really makes you excited and and really curate like a list of like 20 images or 20, you know, kind of artists that are and just try to find like, you know, what flavor are these artists, like what, what style are these artists, you know, what are you personally drawn to? And that's typically where you'll go as an artist, um, I find. Um, yeah. But I still appreciate, you know, a lot of different types of artists. But, um, yeah, it's it's a tough thing, yeah. you know. That's cool. Um, do you recommend... Uh, industrial design in this field? Basically, is it important to learn design before you move on to things like environment, entertainment design? Um, well, I know there's a lot of, there's a lot of, uh, there's a big cross-section between industrial design and concept art, um, especially if you're working on more science fiction, if you're working on more mechanical types of concepts. I know that those skills are very important. But whether you're, you know, working with sci-fi tech stuff or you're doing you know, medieval paintings and designing medieval armor, um, a, a lot of the fundamentals of design, they're all the same. They're very universal. So um, it doesn't, you know, it, it doesn't really matter as much. You know, you just you do the work that you find interesting. Like if you don't find that stuff is interesting, then um, maybe not do it, right? Um, mm -hmm. But I know that that's a really important thing to, to learn and understand, depending on like the type of project you're working on. But I would just say that what's most important is learning design fundamentals, um, like because no matter what you're working on, those fundamentals are always going to stand true. Uh, mm -hmm. And then you can work, you know, 3D, 2D, you know, clay, oil, you know, understanding. Uh, design fundamentals, color fundamentals, anatomy, proportion, you know, balance, composition. I mean, those are so key and crucial to anything. Yeah. Uh, whatever you apply that to is really just, it's just different subject matter. It's just different tool. Um, that's my opinion on that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. For these uh, Elder Scrolls paintings, um, what's typically the process of um, of how they go? Do you get a brief that you stick to, or three D paint overs? Um, this, in particular, was a three D blockout that I painted over. The blockout was done by another artist. Um, there are modular pieces, so there's like a, a small set of pieces that were built up to make the city. And then I just did a paint over on top of that. Um, stuff like this, I just paint. I just go. Um, sometimes I, I'll start with a photo and just paint over a photo and, and just to kind of get an idea down. Um, sometimes not. Sometimes I'll have like a rough sketch or a rough black and white thumbnail that I'll start from. Um, and the briefs that come in, that sometimes they're specific, sometimes they're not. But I would say most of the time they're not specific. Uh, the thing is, is like, with working in Elder Scrolls, 
there's a lot of established lore. There's a lot of stuff that's uh, already been seen in like games like Skyrim or Oblivion or Morrowind or you know. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. So there's there's kind of sort of a base to work from, and there's also a lot of books. There's a lot of written lore. Uh, you know, so there's a lot to pull from. But what's great about what was great about working on this game is that we get to go to a lot of places that have never been seen before and a lot of creatures and, and different designs and ideas that have never been seen in a game before. Um, mm -hmm. And we were able to just, you know, come up with something brand new. So um, it kind of goes back and forth. Mm -hmm. um, well, here's some, uh, I do a lot of figure drawing as well. So here's some figure drawing. I try to go as often as I can. So there's some pencil and vine charcoal. I think that's ballpoint pen on the left. Nice. Uh, yeah. Do you have any advice on trying to master every direction of design? For example, character, creature, or do you try to get really good at one subject, such as environment? Yeah, see, I mean, that was the thing I was saying earlier. It's like I, I, I'm kind of jealous of the artists that just are really good at one thing, you know, but I, I try to approach everything. <laughs> like, I also hear from a lot of students that, like, oh, I just like doing characters. I just like doing characters. I just like doing creatures. And that's kind of hard starting out to find a, a job because I think a majority of the amount of work that you do as a concept artist is environment-based. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I guess maybe it's a little different if you're working on like a League of Legends and it's it's all like new characters and hats and stuff like that. But uh, especially in an MMO, especially most modern games, a lot of the work, a lot of the workload is is environment based. Right. So I think it. I think as a concept artist, you need to be versatile. You need to, especially if your portfolio and you're just starting out, is to have a lot of you know showcase your best work always, but also you know have a bit of variety, show a lot of different application, um, show that you can do creatures, props, environments, characters. Uh, I think versatility is, is the best, and that'll get you the most work. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I've gotten, you know, work before, and I've known people that have gotten hired based on one image, you know, because a, a client or somebody saw that one image and it's like, whoa, yeah, that, that fits perfectly for our project, you know. Mm -hmm. So... Going back to studies, these are film studies that I that I've done. So you, maybe you recognize them. They're from yeah. Things in New York and The Mission and Enter the Void. You know, these were like 20 minute, just quick, 20 30 minute sketches uh, of just a screenshot. Um, and uh, yeah, they're they're fun. I learned a lot about color and composition. Mm -hmm. Do you I go over that a lot in the class? So. Is there something that you look for specifically in these uh, when you're doing these uh, film studies? Something that I'm looking for? Yes, yeah, um, specifically. Yeah, you know, uh, I'll I'll look through a lot of different screenshots, and if there's, you know, I don't know if you get that you're watching a movie and there's just like a, a a lighting situation or an epic scene or just something like an image that tells a story, you know, mm -hmm. that, that happens a lot in film because, you, you know, almost any screenshot is good in a, in a film if it has a good cinematographer and director because they, they spend, you know, a meticulous, you know, they're very meticulous cinematographers about getting the lighting just right, getting people in the shot that are need to be in the shot, getting items and objects that tell a story in a shot. And... I like to I like to understand that and study that because you know they spend a lot of time on every single shot a director of photography you know just to make things uh, everything just right mm -hmm. uh, and tell a story and there's a lot that you know I can learn from that you know if it's you know if it's even like a subtle thing like the, the gaze of the main character the light direction. Um, having two different light sources, um, having foreground, middle ground, background. Um, you know, there's there's a lot of uh, there's a lot to be learned from it, and just understanding composition. Um, mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Yeah. I, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I hear you. <laughs> um, how do you how do you pick your palettes basically for your environments? Do you have them ahead of time in your head, or do you kind of pick them as you go along? Um. Well, sometimes. Um, Sometimes I do. Uh, most of the time I don't. Color and saturation, as well as texture, is something that I just build up over the process, over the over the painting. You know, um, a lot of my experience painting traditionally uh, in in oil definitely uh, comes in quite a bit. Uh, the first thing I think about is always like value and design and composition, and then as I go, I start to think, okay, well, what time of day is it? Where's the sun? What kind of atmosphere is it? Like, what are, is it overcast? Is it, is there a lot of direct light? And when I start asking those questions, I, I, I kind of pull from my memory of painting in, in different times of day, different lighting situations. And, um, and, and, and yeah, I mean, that's, I don't know, that's kind of my process. I just, I think back to, you know, maybe master works you know this this painting in particular is just a quick sketch but uh, there's an there's a Isaac Levitin painting of haystacks that I was looking at and I was like oh man I just I really love the colors and I love the you know the it's the transition of you know um, daytime to nighttime there's a lot of blues and violets and oranges that uh, mix really well and work really well so I was kind of imitating that but then turn it into a you know, a little doodle mm -hmm. of a little guy. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, you know, what's really important to me, like, especially if I'm oil painting uh, or doing watercolor, is what type of blue uh, is, in the, is in the sky, because the blue is, you know, it's the atmosphere. It's It gives things depth. It, it's a very important color. Um, yeah, so mm -hmm. yeah, I pull on a lot of that in the work that I do. <laughs> <laughs> so I like to do silly stuff too. <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> more. Uh, well, this is a little study from around the corner from where cool. I live. Yeah, I mean, like, if people are having trouble with color and understanding it, like, even just being outside and just observing, like, looking at a shadow or looking at, like, light and, and just seeing how light behaves in, in the natural world, like, some, there's something to be said of just being observant. You don't really necessarily have to paint, although I think that's really good because it forces you to think about it. But just if you're outside and you're just kind of looking around, like, constantly observing, you know, um, you have to do that a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have any recommendations on educational books for beginners and or events artists? Oh boy. Um, books. I think I did have some books to recommend. <laughs> I have a lot of, I have a ton of art books, but I'm kind of, I'm kind of embracing the digital future that we're all inevitably moving towards. Uh, and especially if I'm, when it comes to moving, it's really terrible to move books. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, I, I mean, I have a ton of like, um, you know, old masters and stuff that I look at and, and, and try to learn from. Um, so I don't really have a whole lot of books that are coming to mind right now. I know, like, when I started out, I, lo I read and looked at the book Skillful Huntsman quite a bit. I know that was, like, really... Oh, yeah. That was really inspirational for me when I was in college because there really wasn't anything. And Design Studio Press usually comes out with, like, a lot of really good books. Um, you know, if you look up Design Studio Press, they have a ton of really good concept art mm -hmm. uh, artists and just tutorial books and stuff like that. Um, you know what, I don't know. But we live, you know, like I said, the digital future, we're, um, there's 
a ton of great online resources now that you know used to not exist. There wasn't much, you know. We'd go on the forums, my friends and I, and learn from there. Uh, but a lot of it was like, you know, Nomon videos <laughs> mm. back then. Like we have to like, you know, save our money to buy a Nomon video. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, today there's like there's a lot of really great YouTube channels that you can visit and 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 great, you know, get really great free like tutorials and different um, uh, different lessons that are yeah. that are really good and, and especially even CGMA like as a uh, you know not to like <laughs> advertise right but it, you know there's a lot of really great stuff out there that used to not exist mm -hmm. yeah so uh, I think I think if you're a, a little bit internet savvy you can you can pull up some really great um, some really great tutorials and stuff um, mm -hmm. Like I learn the most from just painting outside, you know, honestly. And I know that's like almost cliche now to say, but uh, it's it's true. Um, yeah, I agree. I'm definitely with you on that one. Yeah. These are painting outside digitally, which I don't do too often, but just a couple. Mm -hmm. How fast do you complete uh, some of these pieces? Is there an average work quota expected of concept artists? Um, well, I, you know, it really depends on the image. Some images, you know, I'll work on it for three days or four days. Um, typically, I, you know, through my work schedule, like, uh, I don't, I don't get a, a terrible. Uh, we don't like being that it's an MMO. There's a lot of work that needed to be done and. You know, images like this would be anywhere from two or three days, uh, f uh, like as a full turnover. I probably do maybe three images a week or so, um, typically from scratch. I, some of these were, you know, this one was actually just a, a rough block out that I painted over, just some lighting cues and, and stuff. Um, this one was done from scratch. It was just like a high level key piece for an area that hasn't been built yet. So. It's meant to be more inspirational. Mm -hmm. So an image like this, maybe four days, you know, a little bit longer at, at most. Mm -hmm. um, you know, this kind of is the same thing. Um, you know, I did probably all these images in, in uh, two or three weeks, roughly. I don't know. It was a while ago. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. It depends. <laughs> I know that's terrible to hear, but <laughs> I, I usually when I when my students ask that kind of question, I, I'll I'll be very coy about it, and I'll say, you know, as long as it takes, or like <laughs> you know, until it's until it's answering the question that's being asked of you as an artist, I think that's that's how long it should take. Um, and you know, good art takes time. You know, a sketch is a sketch. It, not everything has to be super polished. You know. Right. Right. Um, I guess I could talk about time in this one. This is a personal piece that I did. Uh, it's a 3D block mesh, and then there's the the final painting. I think the painting time in total was like maybe 20 hours, 22 hours. So I spent a little bit more time on it. Mm -hmm. um, and then the, you know the 3D I actually just did in SketchUp. <laughs> SketchUp is fast and easy, and it's a free program. So I probably yeah. did this in about a few hours, so not very long, and it was all based on a, a thumbnail, um, and then I was able to just do the painting right on top. Cool, cool. Um, you know, little sketches like this, like my sketches that I talk about, that I, you know, uh, that I do, it's probably an hour, hour and 20, you know, I don't know, not long. You know, I do something like this during lunch, you know, just quick, because mm -hmm. I need to, like, if I'm doing something totally different, I just need to, it's just like a palette cleanser sometimes doing these sketches. Mm, I see. Yeah.
We're nearing the end here. Cool. That's Daryl from The Walking Dead. <laughs> nice. <laughs> uh, that's so corny. <laughs> uh, Sergeant uh, Master Study uh, kind of exaggerated some things. That I did for, uh, I did as a demo for the CGMA class. We do master cool. studies, so. You know, these types of sketches are, are really fast, like 15 minutes or mm -hmm. um, 20 minutes. Yeah. Do you uh, use reference for these sketches, these types of sketches? Uh, sometimes, you know, very loosely. Sometimes I'll look at, you know, if I see a shape that's interesting, I'll, I'll be like, oh, that's cool, you know, mm -hmm. and just kind of take it. I don't, I don't really work to copy it. Mm -hmm. uh, for these types of thumbnails. Um, I would say, I think these I just kind of made up. I didn't really look at anything. Uh, I'm just thinking more about design and composition and eye movement and, and like three or four values. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Something like this, I, I was trying to work on a, a, a technique or just, I don't know, just experimenting in Photoshop, kind of playing Photoshop. Uh, and this was a photo, actually, and it looks very close to this. And for that, I didn't want to have to think about composition or subject matter. I just was thinking about process. So mm -hmm. for something like this, I just, you know, copied a photo and, you know, just learn, try to learn something new about Photoshop. Mm -hmm. um, right. <laughs> this painting, this is just a small detail uh, I, I did very recently and it just popped up on the website for Elder Scrolls Online but it's for the uh, new Imperial City it's probably the largest painting I've ever worked on in my entire life <laughs> <laughs> I actually had to break it out into three different like PSDs and then bring it together oh wow I think, I think they want to like print it like I don't know on a subway uh, station or something oh man <laughs> that's cool it had to be very large how big like, is it it's like 20,000 or 15,000 pixels. Jeez. It's, it's ridiculous. Yeah, I'm not. <laughs> I don't know. I was really testing the limits at Photoshop. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. Um, do you, how often do you add photos to your, your concept work or photo bash? Uh, I, I use, you know, not that much. Um, and what's, what's great about, you know, doing an image like this is that I can, use textures from in-game and treat it like a photo bash. Mm. So a lot of these textures and stuff that are in this marketing piece, they're actually just from in-game and it's kind of fun to just like use that as my photo bash. Um, a lot of the work that I showed previously, like a lot of the, you know, a lot of this stuff, uh, I don't really use photo. Like they're really, if I do, it's very small, a little bit of texture. Um, a lot of this stuff, um, because it's still kind of loose, I don't really use photo. Uh, I use photo here where I'm polishing a little bit more. Uh, right. But lately, um, some of the work that I was showing, the more modern stuff, the post-apocalyptic stuff, this is heavy, heavy photo use. And it's just something I wanted to work on personally. Like I, I don't use a lot of photo, so I wanted to practice using it and, and see what I can get out of it. Mm -hmm. um, and it turns out you can get a lot out of photo. <laughs> so, <laughs> and people people love like really photorealistic stuff. So, um, but you know me personally, this is where I'm at. This is home for me, right? Just painting, mm -hmm. and just painting everything out because I'm I'm looking at something, I'm observing something, and then I'm learning how to how to communicate that through simple strokes or color, or, you know, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, this this is kind of where I'm most excited, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, but photo is great. It's a great tool. Like I really, it it really does help, you know, uh, when you need to get an image done, and it needs to look, you know, a, at a certain polish level. Right. Um, well, that's it with that. But I I have um. I have my blog here, jerryworks.blogspot.com. And I post here pretty frequently, but there's a lot of stuff that, that that I didn't even show that, you know, I'll often post my lunchtime sketches and stuff on here. So if people want to check that out, I 
I post more regularly here. Um, you know, so mm -hmm. there's a lot more stuff here, and um, I actually post probably the most on Instagram. And this is where I do my little, my tiny little sketches and stuff, and post it on there. So cool. Um, people want to check that out. Um, and what I wanted to show actually was just some oil painting. Um, I don't really. It is just Instagram, but um, so it's kind of my setup. It's just a really cheap setup um, for oil painting. I use cheap paint, cheap brushes, cheap everything. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it's it's really uh, it's really relaxing for me to do that. So um, you know, people can can look there, follow there, and I'm always paste. I'm always posting more. Um, oil painting and stuff so nice very cool yeah yeah awesome so are there man. any more questions um not at the moment still have about 10 minutes so anything you okay. want to address um, I mean, I could just paint a little bit. If there's any more questions, I'll just keep working on this little thumbnail. I was, I was saying earlier that I, I, I sometimes like to do demos like a, like a cooking show, you know, <laughs> just start like how things are already kind of in process here and just keep working on it because <laughs> yeah. I never actually get something done in yeah. the time. Do you have any tips for uh, doing life studies? Uh, studies from life? I believe so, yes. Um, tips. Uh, man, that's, that's a very general question. Maybe, uh, you know, just get out there and observe and, and really be observant of what's around you. And, um, and also, I find that if I'm painting from life, and if I'm doing like an oil painting or something, I used to get very, very picky about what I want to paint, my subject matter, where I'd actually spend more time like looking for something to paint rather than actually painting. <laughs> and, uh, and I think it's important to like, you know, if you're sitting in a cafe or if you're outside at a restaurant or, or something, or you're just, or you're in your car and you're waiting, um, is to actually just f try to find compositions around you and not think that you need to be in the perfect vista, the perfect spot to to do a painting or do a study. And I guess same goes for if you're using like uh, photo reference. Um, it's to not be so picky, but actually to uh, kind of author your own compositions out of something that's maybe mundane. Mm -hmm. um, I, I had some, uh, I, I had an image I guess that maybe could describe that, uh, you know, well, this stuff, you know, I wasn't, uh, you know, this one right here, I was just sitting at Starbucks. I wasn't, um, it wasn't anywhere like nice, you know, but I saw a, a, an interesting opportunity for a composition. Mm -hmm. I wasn't like, oh, I'm not at the right angle, you know, and like I used to, I used to be like that a lot and you don't get much done. So I, I would say, you know, just be very observant and just try to, uh, you know, if you're outside, just be constantly observing and drawing and, and painting and, um, yeah, and, and the ideas and the compositions will come to you uh, and, and don't be afraid to fail because you will fail a lot. Mm, uh, right. But you just remember you don't have to show everyone your failures. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. How much coffee you know, do you drink throughout the day? Oh, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> I was just gonna say I hope that I hope that answers the question. <laughs> I don't know how much coffee do I drink. Yeah, uh, the <laughs> you know I never drink coffee until I started working, um, and I would drink like half a cup, and that would be plenty for me. Uh, <laughs> my tolerance has gone up quite a bit since then, so I'll maybe have like two or three, you know, throughout the day. Not ridiculous, but. Um, and then I'll have stints where I'll just not drink coffee and I'll switch to tea, and then yeah. that won't last very long. And then I'll just have <laughs> <to> coffee. 
so yeah. I don't drink energy drinks. Those are horrible for you. Don't ever drink those. Oh yeah, don't <laughs> drink those. Those will destroy yeah. you. Yeah, they're terrible. <laughs> Yeah, coffee's great. Oh, uh, yeah. I feel like drinking coffee now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how do you stay healthy when you have a job where you need to sit all day? That Hey, good question. And that's a really big thing, if you're, especially if you're working at a studio or even working from home a lot. Uh, you are sitting for a majority of the day. So I, every day I go running. Uh, my girlfriend and I, we go running together probably about, um, you know, just a few miles or, or less, um, just to get out and do something, you know. Um, I would play uh, Ultimate Frisbee with some work friends or uh, just get out and go hiking. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's really important to have uh, a, a little bit more of an active lifestyle because there's there's a real deep correlation between your mind and, and your body. You know, that I personally believe that I'm more productive and I'm I'm more I feel more rejuvenated and creative and motivated when I have a uh, good exercise. Um, yeah, totally, man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I do all those things. I like to travel and like to hike. Um, go on long hikes. Went to Yosemite last oh. year and, and did some hiking, and that was really fun. Cool, cool. Do you have a favorite artist? Oh, boy. That <laughs> question. Yeah. I have a lot of favorite artists. <laughs> I, I was talking about um, Isaac Levitin uh, and, and Ilya Repin and I, well, maybe I didn't mention Ilya. Ilya Repin is one of my favorite painters. Another, I like. Apparently, I like a lot of Russian painters. Yeah, I noticed that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, so, yeah, those guys. Uh, as far as like working concept artists, I mean, there's so many good artists now. It, it's it's hard to keep track of them. Every time I go on Art Station, I learn oh, about a yeah. new person. Yeah. And it's a little. I don't know. It's, it's scary, but it's kind of <laughs> exciting too. Exactly. Um, I'm surprised I'm still getting work. You know? <laughs> <laughs> There's so many good artists. Um, I'm always really impressed by Sergei Kolsev. Oh yeah, he's um, amazing. I really like his work quite a bit. Um, he's Russian too. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I, I, don't know. Know. <laughs> I don't know. I think he's in France. I don't know. I might be wrong, but I think he's in yeah. France. Oh, okay, okay. He did, or he does still work at Arcane, uh, which is part of ZeniMax. Oh, okay. He, uh, he's part of the family, or was, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I really am constantly impressed by his knowledge of fundamentals and just painting in general. Yeah. Um, you know, there's always the Craig Mullins that everyone likes, you know, to say. He's, he's, he's kind of still the man. Yeah. Um, but there's so many artists now that, that, that do, I think, just as well. Mm -hmm. um, definitely. Young artists, too. Yeah, I definitely agree. Yeah. How do you handle your values in your paintings? Um, well, I always start off with probably like three or four values, and I try to um, keep things very graphic, keep things very flat, try not to have, um, you know, I, I like to think of it as like each each element of the painting, uh, they're, they're like a container. So we have like the cloud, right here as a container and its value range would go from anywhere from here to like there at the darkest and maybe you know there at the lightest and 
this as a material is as a self-contained I don't know kind of element to the painting stays within that value range and just try to keep the value ranges very separate from each other and not like um, you know not have too many if I started throwing values like this in there and I started painting that value into the clouds they would start to blend into the mountains there so um, start off really really simple really really simple like three or four values and then build complexity from there um, so that that's typically how I do it and, and like what's important is that later on in the painting when you start adding more and more complexity sometimes you have to bring it back a little bit mm -hmm. um, and kind of go back to your thumbnail or your original sketch and just because what happens is you have photo texture or um, color and all kinds of fancy brushes you kind of lose that original value study that made the composition so strong mm -hmm. so yeah. a lot of times my last step is kind of my first step and just kind of bringing it back to that simplicity mm -hmm. Definitely. So, yeah very very simple and something I've been doing lately is actually just coloring uh, just coloring with uh, color balance just adding color this way. Oh, nice. So that way I can just that way I can just kind of get a start with the background. I usually when I paint like I think of it as like a watercolor painting. If you ever done watercolors, just starting with the background, your lights, and then moving forward from there. So I typically handle things that way. Um, and finding my sky colors is super important. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I'll you know I'll do something like that, and if and what I'll do is I'll I'll just make a copy of that layer, and then have it clip to what's underneath, and I'll do my uh, I'll do another color like um, like green or something. Oh, nice! And then what I can do is just put a mask on it. I mean, this is not great. Mask on it, invert the mask, and then just brush back in mm -hmm. on the mask uh, that other color. And just see how it's working. Mm, that's cool, man. I'm gonna try that today. <laughs> I like yeah. that. Yeah. So, because you know, uh, on this layer, I have a lot of complexity in my brush strokes and stuff, and I don't right. want to lose that, right? I just want to add color instead of painting opaque color right on top and just painting over all the work that you've done before. And I'll I'll do this especially when I have a lot of texture and photo and stuff in there to get some color complexity in there. Um, oh. You can always turn the mask on and off. And uh, nice, I like that. And I can, you know, do my. Uh, well, I get rid of that. I can uh, do my lights. Get nice warm light. Do the same thing. Mm -hmm. You know, to get like a nice simulation of light coming down. Mm -hmm. So, and still preserving a lot of that detail and stuff that's underneath. Mm -hmm. Right. Very cool. And it's a mask, you know, you just play with it. Mm -hmm. So. That's kind of like that, that study of the yellow building. That was kind of where I started like playing around with this idea. Just doing a bunch of flat colors and shapes and then doing this process to build complexity. I see, um, I see. Yeah. Nice. Well. Sadly, we are at the end of the interview. <laughs> All right. Do you have any uh, anything else you want to say or any best piece of advice? Um, <laughs> uh, um, no, I mean, thank you, you know, for having me. This it's been it's been great. Um, you know, uh, take take the class uh, or not. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know advice like uh, I, I think the best thing is just you know don't be afraid to fail you know because mm. 
especially if you're working digitally and if you're working traditionally, you know, just don't be afraid to fail. Like failure's part of the game, you know, and it's going to happen. Um, and uh, just as long as you're learning from your failures, yeah. I think is the most important thing. And know that, you know, um, you know, with each failure, you, you just get better and better and better. And it takes time and you'll lose patience, but, you know, it'll make you a better artist in the end. Mm -hmm. And know that, uh, you know, a lot of artists, like I know me, like personally, I, we, you still have insecurities as an artist and that's totally normal. Like everyone has it and I still have a lot of insecurities too, you know. So um, it's a struggle and it's something that you'll probably struggle with as long as you're doing it, and that's cool. It's normal. Just enjoy the process, mm -hmm. and that's. I think that's the most important thing. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Awesome. That was great. Thank you. Cool. Cool. All righty. Well, thank you, everybody. Until next time. Take care, guys. Yeah. Take care, everybody. All right. Bye. Bye.